Hey Bridges class, it's Amy Vogel. I'm here with you for week two of our study on the person of the Holy Spirit. And I hope you enjoyed week one. I got some good feedback as well as um, some camera editing advice from Brad Coleman who, uh, who told me to turn my phone sideways and get near a window. So I've tried to do that. So hopefully the lighting's a little better and um, the, the view's a little better. I'm still here in the main cave as you can see. Um, at a desk we don't really use, but maybe one day will be my office, but that seems a little weird since it's a man cave. But anyway, I'm going to try and um, make this a shorter lesson so y'all can have more time to discuss, but I hope y'all had a, a good time last week, and I'm looking forward to being with y'all in person next week. So on to week two. We are talking about developing a relationship, creating space for a relationship with the person of, a Holy, of the Holy Spirit. And this week... We're talking about experiencing the Holy Spirit and, you know, the whole premise behind experiencing the Holy Spirit is just understanding more about um, what it feels like, what it is like to be engaged, to be in communion with the third person of the Trinity. And so the reason why we're doing that is the reason why we looked at in week one, which is, you know, why would we want to do this? Why would we want to engage with the third person? And that's simply because he's God. And the more we learn about him, him being the Holy Spirit, the more we learn about Jesus because he's sent to reveal Jesus. And then the more we learn about God, the father. So through the spirit, we learn about the son and we learn about the father. And we, through that are all better brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. So the goal here today really is to deepen re your relationship by giving you some understanding about what could, what might, what could, what is possible in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, what that might look like, what it might feel like, all that good stuff. So we'll just jump right in and I'll just say, you know, I think we've all had an experience where we're at the very beginning of a relationship, whether that's a romantic relationship, dating or um, whether that's a friendship, just, you know, we're, we're built for different kinds of relationships. And regardless of the kind of relationship we're talking about, the main goal is to really get to know somebody. I mean, hopefully that's the goal, right? And as you learn about them, as you grow in knowledge of who they are and they come to understand who you are, you begin to share more and more time together. And as you walk through your life together, and that becomes a situation where you have a pool of experience that you can really draw from. And um, you, that just furthers your relationship. It takes it to a different place, a deeper place. The more time, literally the more time you spend with somebody. And um, so, you know, that's, like I said, that's the goal of, of today. That's really the goal of the devotional that I wrote. And I'll try and bring some of those with me. Um, when I meet y'all in person, um, I don't know if I'll have time to get them all printed off, but I'll try. And um, really, it's the first is to deepen the knowledge we have, but also to grow in the life that we share with him, that we share with him. And ultimately, that will affect how we do life with each other. And so the first step is really being aware that he is available to have a relationship with, that he does communicate, that he does connect um, I think that's part of the challenge in, in the whole church is that it's nobody really knows. How do you interact with the spirit? But, you know, it's it's one of those things where just like at the beginning of any relationship, it's going to take its own journey and it's going to have its own experiences. And, you know, what you experience with someone is going to be different than experiencing it with somebody else. But at the same time, the goal is to to grow and to know and to share Um but most people don't even in the church don't even know that it's a possibility to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, but I believe he truly wants that. And that's what's really going to turn things around for whether that's in our own personal life, our life at the church, our life at work, community, the city, this nation, just even beginning to be aware. And that's where y'all are right now. You're coming to an awareness that you can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, that's, that's the first step. And, um, that, you know, that was really what last week was about the introduction. So today I want to give you some insight about what it might be like, 
what might happen when you engage in communication with the Holy Spirit. And that can sound, again, kind of disconcerting. How do we do that with the Spirit? It's not like a ghost, like, woo. It's not scary like that at all, but it is exciting. It's, it's a very unique adventure unto, unto itself. And the person of the Holy Spirit engages with everyone in different ways. The way that I experience him is not the same way my husband does. It's not the same way that even my children do. They hear from him in, in different ways. And um, so we're constantly growing and changing. And so just as we grow and change, our relationship and the way that we relate and communicate with the Holy Spirit can grow and change. The way I, I talked and walked with him before is not necessarily the exact same way that I do that with him now because I know him better now. I've, I've practiced being in his presence. So um, I just want to... Um, say that, you know, that's kind of the, I don't want to say disclaimer, but the caveat that everybody's going to have their own journey. It's all going to be unique. So um, don't look around too much. Focus on what's happening with you. <laughs> and um, the, But there are some general, I guess, consistent themes, guidelines that I wanted to share today, just like I would with any uh, couple thinking about getting married, newlywed couple. There are some things that I about marriage that I would share. So Having, uh, having be, or I am a little farther down the path than maybe some of y'all are in um, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I just want to share, share what I know up to this point. And like I said, it's constantly growing and changing. So if I do this again, it might be different next year, what I say. But, you know, the more connected, the more time we spend with him, the better we will understand how he works and how he connects with us. And that will ultimately help us to be better people, to live into our calling better, to um, know Jesus better, to know the Father better. It's, there's just so much benefit to getting to know the Holy Spirit. So um, I think the, the first thing that I would share with you about experiencing the Holy Spirit is that he speaks. He, he has the capability of speech. He's a person. And that's one of the things that, that identifies him as personhood is that he speaks. And, um, you know, the greatest and most profound way that he speaks is always through scripture. If whatever you're hearing does not line up with scripture, then it's not God. It's not the Holy Spirit. And um, there are so many examples in scripture of how he engages, how he speaks to people. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, he is there, he is working, he is active, and he's speaking. He inspired the Bible to be written. So, um, somehow those, those scribes and those people, the gospel writers, the writers of scripture heard from God, heard from the Holy Spirit and were able to understand what he was saying, um, in a way such that, you know, it, it got written down. And, um, you know, the, the thing about scripture is because it is God breathed. And we talked about that last time it's inspired by God. Um, uh, when you're reading it, as my friend Mosika likes to say, the Holy Spirit puts flesh on the skeleton of scripture. So one way you might know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you is if you read a particular Bible verse or passage or, and, and it just jumps off the page at you, it has meaning and application in your life right now. That's him. <laughs> that's him. That's he's, how he's communicating spirit to spirit, heart to heart. And, um, you know, it's, it's, exciting when that happens. It makes you want to read scripture more because you just start to soak it in and start to really understand not only what the verses are saying and what the writers might have meant or, you know, your Bible study just has so much more life and color to it, but he really starts to speak into how those verses can help you walk in this Christian life in the sanctified victorious life, um, in, in a way that makes the most impact. Um, in a way that is more loving. You know, the words of Jesus make sense. So that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Uh, often people will say, you know, if I just heard the voice of God, if just if God would just speak to me, but you have to know that he is speaking all the time. He always has something to say, no matter how small the situation or how big it is, he always has something to say. So we have to listen. Obviously, if he's always speaking, we have to be open to listen. But also, um, you know, people want to hear the audible voice of God, and I know people <laughs> heard the audible voice of God, but I would say I think it's pretty rare. And the reason why I think that's pretty rare is 
I think he's more likely to speak to you and say a um, say a dream than out loud in your waking hours. Um, and and it's not impossible. Like I said, I've, I know people that have heard the audible voice of God, but it. I think he wants us to go search for him. Uh, not that he doesn't want to give us answers, but I think there's a richness that is gained. There is a growth that is gained when we go seek him, when we look for him, whether that's in scripture, whether that's in our circumstances, and we'll talk about that in a minute, or whether we seek out mentorship, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. But, um, you know, in Matthew 7, 7, it says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. And so I found that when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, he's, he's definitely speaking about my present circumstances. Sometimes he's speaking about future circumstances, but a lot of times the experience that I have with him now will have meaning for someone else. And so that process, that rich process of seeking him, which is why I say he's more likely to speak in a dream than he is out loud in your present circumstances, um, is because that journey of finding out, of learning, of seeking and asking and knocking will not only enrich your life, but enrich the lives of others. And John sixteen thirteen says, and this is Jesus speaking, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. So there's, there's really a, a good effort in learning not only how he speaks to you, um, or, you know, if he's speaking through scripture, what he's speaking about, but you know, there's, there's richness in taking a while to figure out exactly what he said and why. And, uh, and I don't, I don't know that God always wants it to be a slam dunk because it's complex. What he's speaking to our life often is, it involves other people, involves situations getting set up. It's just, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. His plan is for our benefit, but it's also for the kingdom to come. So we have to be aware of that when, when we look for him to speak. Um, the, the most often way that he speaks to me is just a knowing. It's, it's a feeling that I get. Um, there's not always a, uh, a, a, maybe it's a word or a phrase that comes to me. And we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks when we talk about the gifts of the spirit and words of knowledge and, um, words of wisdom, those are often, um, you know, gifts that he gives so you can speak into a particular, uh, for encouragement or direction. You know, there's also the gift of prophecy. We'll get to that in a few weeks, but, um, you know, sometimes I, when I'm praying, especially, I just, I just, I, I have a knowing that's the only way I can describe it. A feeling that the words that are in my heart, the words that are there that just appear there that come into my mind. Um, of course, if they line up with scripture, especially that, that that's a very good chance that that's God speaking to me. Uh, I'm not hundred percent accurate by any means, but, um, you know, that's, that's for me, the, the biggest way that I trust that he speaks. And so there's trust involved in this too. There's a certain amount of just go with it. And the more you go with it, the more that you learn how he speaks to you, how he's communicating with you and, and understanding the difference between your feelings and your knowing, um, common sense I and mean, common sense goes a long way. Y'all. I mean, I really believe the Holy spirit also speaks through common sense. So, you know, if you have the ability, you have the gift of wisdom and you can see things that other people just don't. And you point it out. That's very valuable in this world. Even if it seems to you like common sense. Um, you know, you just have to be real discerning and, and pray and, and everything that comes to you, everything that you experience. And, you know, I, um, mentioned my girl, Sophia, my middle daughter, when, when she hears from God, when she's really hearing from God, it's like a, almost like a blackboard or a whiteboard in her mind. And she sees the letters of the word or the phrase just typed up in her mind, just like tick, 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 tick. It's like clicking on a screen. It's like God's typing in her mind and it's really cool. Um, you know, that, that happens to her a lot. There are things called visions where it, those are different in dreams, different than dreams, but it's, it's a way that God speaks where he gives you a, a visual or, you know, you use your, your holy sanctified imagination. You ask God, Holy Spirit, what is happening in the situation or what should I be thinking about or praying about? And 
you, you clear your mind and you center and you realize that there's a picture there. Um, and sometimes these pictures go on for a long time and they're like long movie scapes and, um, uh, you know, what do they call the storyboards? Those, those kind of things. That's another way that he speaks. That's a, that's a knowing or a feeling. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a song that comes to you at the right time. It doesn't even have to be like a CCM or a, a praise and worship song. Uh, there's a lady I was praying with and she heard the song blinded by the light. I mean, that is not a Christian song, but you know, those, those kind of things require faith first and foremost does require faith um, to engage with the Holy Spirit and trust that he wants a relationship with you. But, but when those things happen um, and they bear themselves out, sometimes when you get these knowings or feelings, you have to wait. Sometimes you just know it's God. You just, you are just certain that it's God, but a lot of times you have to wait and you have to weigh it out and, and make sure that what you heard or what you felt or, or what you came to understand about that situation was the right one. So there is some time involved. There is growing with this. But, you know, the, the more that you engage with it, the more that you ask God for his thoughts on something, the more you ask God for his direction on things, the more you will learn the difference between his voice, your voice, and the enemy. Because at any given time, we have those three voices speaking to us, ours, God's, and the enemy. And um, sometimes the Lord's voice is this you know, small, still voice, what is it? A still small voice, quiet voice, quiet whisper. Um, like when he spoke to Elijah, um, sometimes it's loud. Sometimes you just know it just reverberates in you like a vibration. And you know, sometimes it's the enemy is speaking and it's loud and it hurts and you feel bad about yourself. That's, that's a really good way to know the enemy is the one speaking because his, his whole goal is to steal, kill and destroy. So if he can he can steal your joy or destroy your thought life or your, you know, walk you into deci a decision that is a bad one, that it, that goes against what God has spoken and revealed in his word. Then, you know, you can learn those thoughts real quick. And then our thoughts are generally a mix of good and bad. We don't all hate ourselves and we don't all love ourselves completely. So you just have to learn to distinguish between your, the voices and, I'm coming to realize what my voice sounds like and I'm coming to realize what God's voice sounds like. And it's real easy to then pinpoint the third one. And uh, cause usually it's not good. Usually, even if it's subtle, you take it out and you look at it and you examine it and you go, Hmm, that doesn't line up with scripture. Hmm. That's not very good at all. So there you go. That's, you know, in hearing and, and knowing and feeling things from God, that's how you can, can, way out and understand as well as give it time, um, to, to see how, how God is communicating with you. I wrote this, the Holy Spirit is joy, power, incorruptible power. He is love. He is the essence of Jesus. So if he's communicating with you, it might make you uncomfortable at first. That's a very real possibility, but, um, it's never the, the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit is never meant to make you feel bad or sh ashamed of yourself. That's, that's not him. He's, his goal is to bring peace and his goal is to set you on the right path. And his goal is to tell you which way to go. He wants that. He desires it. So that's how you can trust in that. Um, and he can also use your mistakes. <laughs> I've learned this very well too, that you know, there are times when I've made the decision and gone out on a limb and gone out in faith and said, Lord, I, I think you're telling me to do this. Well, it turns out he wasn't. I started um, three Bible studies slash prayer groups before I ever got to the upper room and all three of them failed. Nobody showed up. So I thought I was hearing God correctly on that, but it turns out I wasn't, wasn't at all. So when the upper room came around and the opportunity to lead the prayer ministry came about, I knew the difference between my desires and his call on my life for sure. But I only learned that because I failed at it three times. So, um, you can also hear connect with the Holy spirit through circumstances, especially when you see your answers to prayer, that's God speaking to you for sure. Um, if you've ever been in a, a place or a, a prayer, you know, a place or a position where you know that he's protected you, where you know that he has answered your prayer, that's a way that he communicates for sure. And uh, I don't want to forget to say this, and next time I might save it for the end, but God also doesn't say things just once. God repeats. He wants to make sure we get the message. He wants to make sure that it, that 
the, even the number of times he has to repeat it, it finally becomes loud and clear. So you're not going to miss him speaking to you. He might have spoken to you 20 times over the last year about something, but there's going to come a time when you realize that it is God speaking to you and you can act on it. And a lot of times that'll be the right time to act on it. So, um, you know, the more you pay attention, the more that you will recognize that. And maybe God has to say it less. Maybe the Holy Spirit has to pass those messages on from the Father less, but he just continually is repeating what he wants us to know and the lessons he wants to teach us for our betterment and for the, for other people. Um, a big way, probably as much as I get these knowings or feelings or these, these phrases and words in my mind, um, sometimes visuals, um, as much as that happens to me, it happens to me equally as much that other people will say something to me that I will recognize as the voice of God speaking to me, that I will recognize that the Holy Spirit has communicated through them to me. That's an extremely powerful way of hearing from God, you know, and that's why it's important to have a diverse group of friends, you know, um, not that there's anything wrong with just talking to your peers, but have a mentor talk to, if you have a good relationship with your parents, talk to your parents. And by the way, he doesn't have to use people that you like to speak to you. He can also use people you don't like. That's definitely happened to me. That's actually how I came back to Christ at the age of 29. Uh, my boss at the time called me a hypocrite and that just wrecked me. And that set me, set me back on course with him because I didn't want to be a hypocrite anymore. But most of the time, the enemy is using those things to distract you and discourage you, but God can work through those things. Sometimes strangers will just randomly say things <laughs> and it will be like the light turns on over their head. It's like, oh, <laughs> you'll get it. Um, but it, that's important why it's, it, it, you need to be in relationship and in community with people of, of all different ages and stations and, and, um, you know, people from different backgrounds, because, you know, God's going to use, like I said, he's going to use whatever he needs to, to on repeat to get the message to you. Um, and you know, I wanted to share this real quick. I, I, this week we were on our mission trip to Westlaco, Texas, down in the Valley on the border. And, um, I was really struggling last week, um, with just this whole idea of getting everything right. And three different people over the course of a week said the word perfection to me. Christian said it last Friday and he said, you know, you just have to fight against being perfect. And this whole idea that there's perfection in a mission trip. And I was like, Oh, that's good. And then we went to the branch for our commissioning, which is where I was last Sunday. And in prayer, Luis Palomo spoke against the spirit of perfection. I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. Perfection. I'm, I don't want to fall into that trap of thinking I have to be perfect. It is a struggle. And those were confirmations that God was with me and God didn't want me to be tempted and trapped by that. And then just, let's see, today is Friday when I'm recording this. So I was on the phone with Winter Patterson, who's a real good friend of mine. And she was like, are you at all bothered by or struggling with perfection? And that was three times, three different people from totally different backgrounds um, you know, I know Christian and Winter real well, but I don't know Luis all that well. And so for for the three of them to all say that word, and specifically in the context of this mission trip, I, I knew that was God saying, don't worry, do not be afraid, take heart. You don't have to be perfect. I got this. So it was a real good confirmation for me. Um, and the last one I wanted to talk about was um, physical sensations, because Really, sometimes you'll feel the Holy Spirit working in your body, and that's because, you know, he's a part of us. He's on the inside, and um, sometimes to really get the message, you know, those gut feelings, but more than just gut feelings, it's, you know, actual physical sensations, and um, it's one of those things that's cool, but you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, I didn't walk in here with a knee issue, but... Um, and it may not even be, you know, like what physical healers talk about, you know, somebody in the room has a problem with their knee. It may not even be that. It just may be, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is, is trying to tell you something and get your attention through your body. And that's because we're, we're heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's all connected together. We've got, you know, the heart, we've got the body, we've got the spirit, and it all works together. The heart in scripture, it's off topic, but the heart means soul. Anyway, so soul, mind, and body, it's all related, all together. So sometimes he'll speak speak that way. 
And I don't even have to, you know, give you an example from my own experience um, with the Holy Spirit about that, although that does happen to me. Uh, but I wanted to use uh, some reports from Charles and John Wesley, as well as Charles Finney, just so you know, this isn't like just me talking. <laughs> the Holy Spirit engages with people in all kinds of different ways. But uh, in 1738, Charles Wesley, the guy who wrote all the hymns, like over 10,000 hymns or something ridiculous like that. If you look in your hymnal, you'll see so many of those were written by Charles Wesley. But um, he wrote in his journal, the spirit of God chased away the darkness of his unbelief. Like he felt that unbelief leave him. And then three days later, John Wesley was at a house on Aldersgate Street in London. He was reading the book of Romans and he said, said I felt my heart strangely warmed. And Wesley has documented several experiences with the Holy Spirit that, you know, I guess what we would call today the fire falling, just the presence of God so heavy in the room that you feel it. You He has entered our time and space and there's no doubt about it. You just feel the, the weight of the presence of God or you feel the energy or you feel the, the, the heat that comes from the, the, fiery love that he has for us, you know, Elkanah, the jealous God, the fiery God. Um, but this is, I'll, I'll leave y'all with this, um, as kind of the last, last peach piece, the cherry on top, Charles Finney, who's a great American revivalist in the early 19th century wrote of his experience with the Holy Spirit. And this is kind of the, uh, what people use to really describe because it's such a vivid explanation. And this was after, by the way, multiple hours of, of prayer and asking for this experience and seeking to commune with the Holy Spirit. He writes, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in as a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves and waves of the liquid love, for I could not express it in any other way. It seemed like the very breath of God can re recollect distinctly that it seemed like it seemed like the very breath of God. I can recollect distinctly that it seemed like a fan to me, like immense wings. I mean, that's so cool. It's such a cool description. It's such a cool, cool thing to to know that God does absolutely communicate with us in a way that is tangible, literally tangible. We can feel it. We can use all our senses and engage with the Holy Spirit, not just our spiritual senses, but our physical senses. And he wants to, to talk to us and communicate with us that way. So, um, you know, like I said, I liken this to a marriage, just as my relationship with Dave has, has grown and developed my understanding, my relationship of the way the Holy Spirit communicates me, can, can communicates with me develops day by day. It, it improves, it gets better you know, 10,000 hours of practice makes you an expert, right? <laughs> I don't think I'm quite up to 10,000 hours, but, uh, and it's very specific and unique to each of us. So don't let anybody trip you up. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not hearing from God, that it's the enemy. If it's a certain way, you know, you, you just never know. He's, he's the infinitely creative creator. He's, he's, he, you know, if you look at the birds of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, you'll see that there are just millions of ways that God can communicate with us. And sometimes it's even through creation. That's one way I didn't didn't mention. Sometimes it's just being among what He has created, and and you will get an impression from Him. So what I'm gonna I, I didn't um, make a handout this time because I want to encourage y'all to discuss your own experiences with God and, and don't resist it. You know, the more you resist, the harder it'll be just like you can't develop a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to share, doesn't want to be in relationship with you. The Holy spirit can't communicate and connect with you. If you're, if you're not open to it, so be open, you know, don't resist it. Be courageous. Take a, take a risk and go out on faith and, and ask him for that. Um, but he wants to know you. He wants, hi, Ella. He, <laughs> there's Ella. He wants you to know him and he wants to know you. Not that he doesn't already know you, but hey, babe. <laughs> he, it's just different for, for you. It's different. Oops, sorry. Oh. <laughs> and this is the end of the lesson. <laughs> it's different for um, me as it is for her and it'll be different for you too. So be brave and share. Seek more of him. Ask, seek, knock. Look forward 
I look forward to being with y'all next week. And um, just remember, he wants a relationship with us. He's, he's the third person of the Trinity, and he wants us to be complete. And we will find him when we seek him. So y'all be blessed. Discuss your own experiences. And, um, you know, even if it doesn't seem like um, you knew it was him at the time, just just talk about him. Talk about what uh, what life has been like for y'all with the Holy Spirit, if, if you've had anything. Um, even if you didn't know that what it was, so <laughs> I gotta go, <laughs> but, um, I will see y'all next week. Say bye, Ella. Say bye. <laughs> I will see y'all next week. And I look forward to, to hearing about y'all's own experiences and, and stories. Bye. <laughs>